Hello crafty friends, I'm Lynn from Studio Kato and I'm so happy to be back on the Reverse Confetti YouTube channel today. Today I have this fun spotlight colored floral cart for you and I'm using the Hello Daisies uh, stem set by Reverse Confetti. I love the floral image but I also really like that bold hello sentiment and there are coordinating dies for both the sentiment and the floral cluster. Now I'm going to do some spotlight coloring and I'm using the double stitched window cover panel for that so that's why I have a die in my Misty just to line up the stamp. I want that window to be as full of flowers as possible so I use the die to line up my stamp. I am stamping two panels with this. I made sure that my panels were the exact same size. I just cut them down to an A2 size and I'm stamping one panel with some light gray dye ink uh, and this is going to be my frame. Then for the part of the image that I want to have colored, I am stamping a second panel, uh, another A2 size panel, and I'm stamping that in Memento Tuxedo Black ink. Any ink that works for alcohol markers will do here. I do leave the stamp in my Misty because you know me, I love to add a glossy outline so i'm using i'm going to use some embossing powder for that later i'll show you how to do that now there's a lot of coloring but it's fairly easy with these flowers i always do the same thing with my flowers i go from dark to light from the inside of the petals outwards and if you plan ahead a little bit to know which flowers you want to do which colors this is really easy and quick to do um, because you can just do all of the shading for your yellow flowers and then uh, work your way outwards, not switching markers all the time for each flower. So when I use the orange on the inside of one of the flowers, I'm going to use that for all of the flowers I went yellow and then work my way through the markers for all of the flowers. For this blue combination, I wasn't super sure about it. And it was a little bit fiddly because my lightest blue shade was a lot lighter than my mid-tone. So I did want to work quickly. You can absolutely go slow with alcohol markers. So you don't have to go quickly for the colors to blend. But I find that it makes it easier sometimes if you have a difficult marker combination where there's a lot of space between the lightest and the, um, the mid-tone -shade, mid shade. Um, you might want to work a little quicker because it might ease it up a little bit. Now, even though I am not going to be using all of this flower on my card or all of this flower cr cluster on my card, I figured I would just color all of it. It's a lot easier to color it all than to figure out where to stop your coloring and not miss a spot. Now, these are very bright colors and if I were to leave the background white, I probably would have dulled the colors down a little bit more. Now, I am going to fill in all of the gaps in between the flowers with a duller green. So that will give a neutral shade for the eye to rest a little bit. White doesn't really do that if you have a lot of uh, punchy colors like this. So you might want to add some neutral shades and I am going to do that with the background. As I said, I'm going to fill that in with a uh, duller green, but I'm also going to do that with the flower centers. They're quite big on these flowers and I like to color my flower centers brown anyway, but it's perfect for a neutral place for your eye to rest on. Now to get that glossy outline I love so much for my images, I just keep the stamp in my Misty and I stamp it again after I'm done coloring uh, in Versafine Onyx Black, which is a very, very black uh, pigment ink. And because it's a pigment ink, it is slow drying, so I can add embossing powder to this. I'm going to add some clear gloss super fine embossing powder to it and heat set that with my WOW Jewel Speed Heat Tool. I do this after coloring because coloring with your, your alcohol markers over embossed outlines uh, might rub away the embossing powder and the embossing powder that dissolves, that you rub away, can actually clog up your nip of the alcohol marker and it will ruin your nip. 
you don't want that so i just do the extra step of stamping it twice now i am going to die cut this but because my card is already a two size i am making sure to line it up perfectly with the die i am taping it in place with some purple tape and then i can die cut this out i did the same for the gray stamped panel and then i can just fill in all those gaps in the background with a duller green now like i said alcohol markers and embossing powder don't mix so i am being careful to not go over the lines too much if you just rub against it a little bit with your marker it shouldn't be a problem it's if you color over a embossed outline a lot you might get bad results so i am going to add a tiny bit of shading as well on that background so just a drop shadow of the flowers really i am doing that by tracing the line art with a gray marker over top of the background i'm only doing it on one side obviously because the shadow only falls on one side but it's really easy to do and it does make a subtle but it's it's an important difference in my opinion now this is my frame panel and if you look very closely you can see the traces of that gray stamping of the flowers around the square window uh, so that is going to be my frame and I am stamping the hello right on top of it with that same Versafine Onyx Black pigment ink so I can clear emboss this as well. It's gorgeous, this pigment ink um, embossed with clear gloss embossing powder. It just, it's the truest black I can achieve in stamping and I love it a lot. After heat setting this, it's time to put it all together and it's a really easy card to assemble all i do is add the frame down onto the card base i'm using a top folding white note card and i'm just gluing the frame down uh, on there now with the stitched detail it's sometimes a little bit harder to glue it down so i just rub over it with a bone folder to make sure it sticks down nicely I'm adding some craft foam to the back of my square that I'm propping up. Um, I'm using double-sided adhesive for this because I find that's the easiest way to adhere craft foam. Sometimes glue just seeps into the foam and it doesn't really work out for me. <laughs> I think I'm the only one who has that issue, but I just use, um, I just use the double-sided adhesive. To finish it off, I'm adding some gems. These are Meraki Sparkle Gems. I am not sure what the color is called, but I will list it in the description below. I really love how that propped up square is so very vibrant in colors and you have that subtle gray outline of the flowers continuing on the rest of the frame. It's such a fun effect. It's so easy to do and you don't have to color an entire panel this way if you uh, dike it first you can save some time coloring i love to color so i didn't do that but it yeah it's just a really fun way to spice up your coloring and spice up your die cutting if you want i really love how this card turned out i love the colors and i love that big bold hello at the bottom of the card it's my favorite sentiment stamp from reverse confetti probably and i also love that it has a uh, coordinating die i didn't use it today but it's perfect to prop it up over the floral cluster if you want all of the products i use today will be listed and linked in the description below so you can check those out for yourself thank you so much for watching and i hope to see you next time